In this video, we're going to tell you the truth about ductless mini splits. We're going to give you the ins and outs about both efficiency, whether or not they're effective, whether or not they're a good option, uh, when you should consider using a mini split or when they make the most sense. And when they don't make most sense, um, sometimes people are trying to replace their entire HVAC system just with ductless head units. And we can talk about whether or not this makes the most sense for your specific situation. We'll talk about the pros, we'll talk about the cons and all that and more. But before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. So if you find this content helpful, it's a great way that you can show support for the channel and also stay up to date on the latest in HVAC technology and trends. So first off, let's talk about what a ductless mini split is. As it sounds like from the title, what you'll start to learn in the HVAC space is that engineers are not that creative when they name things. And so when they come up with a product, they tend to call it what it is. So a pressure reducing valve, for example, reduces pressure. It's pretty simple. We're not the most complex bunch. We're pretty literal people. So a ductless mini split is what it sounds like. It is an HVAC system that has no ducts or duct work involved. Now there are variants of mini splits like a slim duct or slim ducted unit that tie into a mini split ductless condenser, which is your outdoor air handler. So you can have the capacity of, let's say, ducting a small area. Let's say you have an upstairs you know, bedroom or a couple of bedrooms upstairs, putting in a slim ducted system, even though it will tie into a traditional ductless type of condenser or style of condenser, which is typically a side discharge condenser. That can still be a good option. And in, for all intents and purposes, that is not a ductless system because there is ductwork involved. And so we're going to be focusing more on mini splits. But I just wanted to bring that up because that is an option for some people that are looking for either a combination type of system where they can have both a ducted and ductless system. But let's talk about what some of the biggest benefits are of going with a ductless system before talking about some of the drawbacks. Now, the biggest benefit to ductless systems by far is that they are quiet and they are efficient. The reason they are quiet and efficient is because these are inverter driven products. Now, what an inverter does is it converts alternating current to DC current through an inverter board. And without getting too nerdy on you, that's how it powers the compressor in increments. And so basically when your system is ramping up and down, instead of coming on at 100% capacity and then shutting off, it'll actually come on at 10 or 20 or 50% capacity and ramp up slowly. And as a result, a lot of these mini splits can run at 45 or 50 decibels, which by comparison to a traditional air conditioner that runs at 70 or 80 decibels, it is extremely so quiet that we could have a ductless mini split running in this room right now while I'm recording this video and you wouldn't even hear it running with the exception of some minor noise coming from the fan, but you wouldn't be able to pick it up through the microphone. They're extremely efficient, extremely quiet systems. We absolutely love them for this reason and our customers love them for this reason as well. Now, one of the second benefits of these systems is that ductless systems, most people think of the ductless systems. We're talking about the head units that can get mounted on the wall or the cassette style systems, which are systems that get flush mounted in the ceiling. Those cassettes or ductless mini split options are great because you can pinpoint comfort in the areas where you are most uncomfortable in your home. So for example, if you have a three story home and your office on the top floor doesn't seem to get good airflow from your vents because the furnace or the air handler to the system is in the basement. This is a very common scenario that we run into often where people say, why is my upstairs so hot? And that's why it's hot because the way that the system is designed, it's just not going to keep up and it's not going to be comfortable on that top floor or on the floors that are furthest away from the mechanical room, wherever your air handler is that is circulating all the air through the home. So putting a ductless mini split on the top floor or in the room that is always too hot or too cold can be a great way to heat and cool a space and provide zoned heating and cooling. And that brings me to my next point is that they can actually make the entire home more comfortable by attacking those trouble areas because often Oftentimes what you'll find is that in order to get that upstairs office or the master bedroom that's upstairs to get that comfortable, you might have to keep the rest of the house at an uncomfortably cold temperature. And all that does is make it very inefficient because your whole house might be at 70 degrees or 72 degrees just so you can get the upstairs to the temperature that you want. And by keeping the rest of the house at this really uncomfortably cold or uncomfortably hot temperature. And with a mini split, what happens is if you set, let's say your target temperature for the rest 
rest of the house is 74 degrees. And then you have a mini split upstairs that is in that area that's also set to 74 degrees. But let's say normally in the summer, it gets up to 80 degrees or 82 degrees in that room. Well, now by taking off the load on the hottest part of the house, that room that is always hot, you're actually helping the other system keep up with the rest of the house because it's not having to work so hard with this upstairs bedroom that's constantly hot and constantly a source of a load on the house. And so it can actually help the whole house feel more comfortable just by attacking that troubled area. Now, one of the other benefits of mini split systems is that oftentimes they're easy to install or they're easier to install, I should say, than a ducted system, right? If you're looking at a finished home that doesn't have any ductwork and you said, can you come in here and add ductwork for us? It would be extremely difficult and it would be extremely expensive. And the reason is, is because we're going to have to build out soffits and framing around all of the ductwork. And so we're, on, we're after we're done running the trunk lines and the ductwork, cutting holes in the floors to get airflow everywhere that you want it. The downside in this instance is that that installation would be extremely expensive and it probably wouldn't work as well as just adding a ductless system at that point. And so they're nice because you can add the air conditioning or the heat pump in the areas where you need it the most. That's why we absolutely love them. They're a great Swiss Army knife tool, so to speak, that we can use in multiple applications. And they do a great job of heating and cooling and the big thing to consider with these systems is that making sure that you're getting one that is going to keep up in your climate because depending on whether or not you have a high ambient climate or a low ambient climate, meaning do you live in a very hot desert or a you know a very cold Arctic tundra, you want to make sure that the heat pump or the air conditioner you're getting is going to be designed to keep up in those super hot temperatures and it's sized accordingly. Now, one of the last and final benefits I wanna talk about before I talk about some of the cons related to mini splits that some people bring up as concerns is that they are very efficient, which means they use very little power to operate. So a lot of these systems, because they're inverters, when the condenser, which is your outdoor unit, first kicks on, it might only pull one or two amps, which by comparison with, let's say, a full size five ton single stage system that might pull 35 or 40 amps on startup, these systems, you know, pull a fraction of that in terms of the amount of power they consume when they first start up. And for this reason, they are very flexible. You can use them in environments where let's say you have two electric vehicles in your home and your panel's fully maxed out and you have a lot of electric appliances. Adding one more circuit for a small heat pump or a small mini split is much easier because a lot of times it's going to be a 15 amp breaker or a 20 amp breaker. It's a very small breaker by comparison. And when these systems are running, oftentimes they're pulling five amps or less for the majority of the time that they're running, even when it's really cold or really hot out, which just makes them very versatile so that you can use them in a lot of different applications without having to worry about power constraints if your electrical panel is already maxed out. Now we'll talk about some of the cons, but uh, before we do that, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. If you got value from this content, it's a free way you can show your support and it is much appreciated. The cons I wanna talk about, and there's really only a few, mostly come down to aesthetics. Now these aesthetics can be mitigated and I'll talk about how, but but the biggest complaint or concern that we get from customers when we mention the option of going with a ductless system is that they don't wanna see that ductless head unit on the wall because they haven't had one before and they don't want to now suddenly have an unsightly head unit on the wall that they have to look at. Well, the truth is a lot of the newer units that are out now for these systems, they do make designer head units that look more stylish and sleek, so they do blend in more. But for people that are very concerned with aesthetics, what we often recommend is either a slim duct unit, which is technically a ducted system, but if you have a very small attic, this is something that we can fit in a tight space to heat and cool that area comfortably. And also our other favorite option is what's called a cassette. A cassette style of head unit is a head unit that sits flush in the ceiling and it looks exactly like basically a square ceiling panel tile that you would see at an office. And the reason these are great is because number one, they're flush mounted in the ceiling, so they don't don't really have any aesthetic effect on the room any more than let's say a ducted system might have. And no one really complains about having too many registers in their home. It's just something that we're all used to. And so these cassettes can be great for people that are concerned about the aesthetics of a traditional ductless mini split looking head unit. And the other downside that comes to, again, aesthetics with these is that because we are having to install a separate condenser, sometimes people don't like the aspect of having uh, refrigerant lines ran on the 
outside of their house, but we normally mitigate this by using something called line hide. Ductless line hide is basically a channel cover that the line set goes inside of. So any of the electrical, any of the line set can go inside of that line hide, which is also paintable. So that means you can paint it after it's done or have it painted so it'll blend in with the rest of the house and basically not take away from the aesthetic of the house wherever that line set is being ran because anywhere that you do have a head unit installed inside your home, any of the ductless units, for example, you're going to need to have a set of refrigerant lines running along the outside of the home into that head unit. So we hope you found this content helpful. And if you did, make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you happen to be in one of the markets we service, there's a link in the description where you can actually schedule with us online. And if you are in a market where we don't service, but you're interested in working with a contractor that we handpick and help you select, uh, there's zero cost to you. This is a new program that we are launching in beta mode. So we are literally handpicking these contractors on a case by case basis as people inquire. So if you're looking for a geothermal setup in a specific region and you want to be referred to a contractor, we literally will find one for you. And again, this is in beta mode. So this is in a soft launch right now. And we're trying to help people and also gauge interest to see whether or not people are that interested in this as a product. So if you're interested in working with a contractor that we hand select, again, there's no charge to you. Uh, there's a link in the description that you can click for that on the hvacdopeshow.com. And as mentioned earlier, there's a video popping up on the screen that YouTube thinks you should watch. So make sure you check that out if you haven't done so already. And we will catch you on the next episode.